Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. AITA for not inviting my ex-husband's wife to my daughter's birthday party after she asked me not to. I'm 32, and I have a 9-year-old daughter with my ex-husband, who's 36. We split up when she was just 3. Since then he's remarried to one of his co-workers, let's call her M, they have a 6-year-old son together. My daughter's birthday is in 9 days, and we've been planning it, talking about the theme the cake and all the fun stuff that goes into a birthday party. Everything seemed to be on track until we started going through the guest list. That's when I noticed my daughter becoming really anxious. I asked her what was wrong, and she told me she didn't want him to come to the party. Naturally, I asked why. She told me that M often says things that upset her. For example, M would make comments like, that's why I prefer boys, girls only like pink and tutus, and sometimes she'd call my daughter a brat. The worst part is, whenever M's son annoys her, breaking her toys, calling her names, or starting fights, M always backs up her own kid and punishes my daughter, saying things like, boys will be boys. I asked my daughter if her dad ever intervenes and she said M only acts like this when he's around. Since he's usually in his office, it's like she gets a free pass to be cruel. So, I decided to call my ex to let him know about the party date, and to tell him that M wasn't invited. During the call I could hear him yelling in the background, accusing me of destroying her family. Now, I'm left wondering if I'm in the wrong for not inviting him because my daughter asked me not to. Just to clear things up, my daughter's half-brother is four years younger than her. She was born in April, and he was born in March the next year after our divorce, he just turned six. Also we divorced because my ex-husband told me he was in love with M and wanted to confess his feelings. We have a 50-50 custody arrangement, and my ex has a demanding job. My daughter confided in me that she never told either of us about her discomfort because she didn't want to upset her dad, especially since he seemed happy in his new marriage. So I met with my ex for lunch to explain everything my daughter had told me. At first he was defensive, saying she was probably overreacting. I told him that even if she was, his relationship with his daughter was at risk. I gave him a choice fix the problem, or I'd go back to court for more custody. When I picked up my daughter from his house last Friday, she told me that her dad had been spending more quality time with her, picking her up from school, helping her with homework, and just being present. And then told me she accepted not going to the party, but still wanted to see my daughter blow out her candles on her actual birthday. She baked a cake and asked if my daughter was okay with it before leaving. My daughter seemed fine with it, so we gathered around the cake, my daughter, M, X, and her half-brother. When my daughter blew out the candles, M's son thought it would be funny to smash her face into the cake. Honestly, if this had been an adult, I might have ended up in jail. M and her son laughed while my daughter cried. M then told her she was being dramatic and emotional. This led to a heated argument between M, my ex and me. To my surprise, my ex supported me, saying that M's behavior was unacceptable. While arguing, I noticed my daughter was missing, so I went to check on her. I helped her clean up, and then we left for my house. Despite my efforts to cheer her up, she was still a bit sad. The party went well, and my ex attended. During the party, I told him I wanted more custody because of M's bully. Some of you have asked about my daughter's reaction. She's a very shy and reserved kid. She only opens up to me and her dad. When something upsets her, she tends to stay silent and cry. That's exactly what she did after the cake incident. She cried and retreated to her room. After the cake incident, I asked her if Emma or her half-brother had ever been physically aggressive, played pranks on her, or behaved inappropriately. She said no, explaining that the conflicts with her half-brother were mostly him annoying her. I also asked if anyone else from either side had made her uncomfortable in any way, and again, she said no. Since my last post, she has been seeing her psychiatrist twice a week. The bullying seems to have started around two months ago, which coincides with M's miscarriage. I've been feeling like a terrible mom for not recognizing the signs earlier. I'm doing everything I can to fix this. Last night at 10 p.m., my ex showed up at my door. He called me, said he wanted to talk, and I let him in. Since I don't trust him, I recorded our conversation with his consent. He told me that after the party, he'd been thinking things over and spoke with him about my request for more custody. Apparently, M described my daughter as a spoiled bratty princess who needs correction. My ex realized he had to choose between the two women in his life. He left M's house, drove around, and came to my place. He's staying at a friend's house to think about his relationship with M, our daughter will stay with me during the week and visit him on weekends. I told him that if he gets back with M, I'll pursue full custody. But if they divorce, it will depend on his custody of his son, as I don't want him around my daughter. 
he agreed. Earlier this week, he came by again to tell me that M's son had gotten into trouble at school for cursing at a girl. He confessed his feelings to a girl who rejected him, and he responded by shouting insults no six-year-old should know. Given this incident and the issues with our daughter, he decided to divorce M, she will be served with divorce papers next week, and he's also going to cover therapy for M to maintain a relationship with their son. We, XH daughter and I, will be attending family therapy together. My daughter is happier now, and that's what matters most to me. For the summer, I'm taking her to Japan to visit my side of the family. I'm still pursuing full custody with weekend visitation. If M's son's behavior improves, I'll consider letting him interact with my daughter. My ex is also seeking full custody of his son. I still don't fully trust my ex. I'm keeping a close eye on him and how he raises my daughter. Am I polite? Yes. Nice? Not really. I'm not seeking more custody just because he wants his son, it's because his job promotion means he works more and doesn't have time for our daughter during weekdays. That's why she's with me. Since the last update, things have been evolving, and I've been trying to navigate these changes as best as I can. After my ex's revelation and the divorce decision, our lives have shifted significantly. My daughter and I have settled into a new routine with her spending weekdays with me and weekends with her dad. We've started family therapy, which has been a positive step for all of us. It's given us a structured space to address past issues and work towards a better understanding and co-parenting dynamic. My ex has been more involved with our daughter, and I've noticed a real effort on his part to be present and supportive. This newfound attentiveness has improved the relationship, which is heartening to see. However, I remain cautious and keep a close watch on how things progress, especially with M no longer in the picture. As for my daughter, she seems much happier now. The relief she felt after the party incident was palpable, and the ongoing therapy has helped her express her feelings more openly. We're making plans for a summer trip to Japan, which she's excited about. It's a chance for us to bond and escape the stress of recent months. I've been reflecting on how to maintain stability and support for my daughter. It's clear that the issues with M had a significant impact on her, and I'm committed to ensuring she feels secure and valued. I've also been working on setting boundaries with my ex to avoid any potential conflicts and ensure that our co-parenting arrangement remains as smooth as possible. My relationship with my ex is still primarily functional, focused on our daughter's well-being. We communicate about her needs and schedule but keep personal matters separate. This separation helps us both stay focused on what's best for our daughter without letting old issues resurface. While I'm still vigilant, I'm hopeful that with time, we can create a healthier environment for our daughter and move forward from the turmoil of the past. Thank you for listening to the whole story. Wishing you a wonderful day.